Hello, I'm back with another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the end of our journey, how we deliver our final video. Hello, welcome to InStudio. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. And welcome to this series of videos on DaVinci Resolve. We're at the end of our first season, if you like, of these videos, video number 10. We're going to look at how we export our finished video, how we use the Deliver tab and the settings uh, that we can use there to get uh, good results for um, posting on YouTube. So join me over in uh, DaVinci Resolve and I'll talk you through it. So here we are in uh, DaVinci Resolve. We've got our completed project uh, here in the timeline, on the edit line. Uh, we've done, we've sorted out the sound as we've seen before in Fairlight. Now we need to export it and we do that using the Deliver tab. So we go over here and I'm just going to move that up a little bit so we can just double check. We've got everything we need in here. Again, Alt, uh, and the scroll wheel to compress everything, to zoom in. That all looks fine to me. Now, uh, ultimately, YouTube's my final destination, as I suspect it will be for, for you. But I'm not, you could just click YouTube and say format MP4 and just let it go. And that will work. But you're far better off going to the custom and actually then creating your own preset on this. And there's a couple of things I do with this. Um, first of all, let's look at the three sections here. Let me go full screen, you can see it's a bit better. Uh, video, what I want to do on here, obviously I want to export video, MP4 format, codec H264. Now, this only applies if you've got the studio version, which is the paid for version. So I'm guessing the majority of people watching this won't have, but if you do have, then make sure you select the correct encoder, which is NVIDIA in my case, that's my GPU. I will get a much faster encoding of this. The resolution uh, is whatever your, the maximum resolution of your file is. In my case, I've, all my video is HD, which is uh, 1920 by 2080, by 1080, and the frame rate 25. Now you can't change that, it's whatever it was when you set the timeline up. Now the only other thing I change is the quality here, and these days I set that to 12,000 on there and I know that gives me a high quality output without the file being excessively large and uh, leave all the others as default settings for video. Audio, I just take the defaults on there, I'm happy with that. You could potentially reduce the data rate a little bit but I tend to leave it as it is. File, one thing to change on here and that is instead of using custom name, I prefer to use timeline name. It saves some typing and it automatically fills the top section in here with whatever you call the timeline. So I find that quite useful to do uh, on there. Everything else I leave as it is. So in theory now, I can just hit add to render queue, which will move it from this side where I'm setting up all the information all the way over to this side, which is my queue of um, uh, videos waiting to be rendered. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to save all these settings to make life easy for myself. So I'm going to go on here and say save as a new preset. As ever, always prefix your presets with your initials so that you know that you, they are yours, not a built-in one or a preset you've purchased off somebody else. So IMB standard YouTube output on there. And you'll notice that's added it onto the end of the, uh, the list of things here. So next time I want to render a video, I don't have to go through all those settings. Uh, I can just come in, click on that, and it will set everything up for it. So at this point, I will say add to render queue. Now, 
I haven't filled in a location. You can do that before adding to render, but if that's blank, when you hit add to render queue, it will actually prompt you. So where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it on my L drive and I created a temporary folder. So I'm going to stick it in there. Uh, so select that folder. You can put it wherever you like. Now, moving over onto the other side of this, we've only got the one job in here. Uh, so if I hit render, it will just do that. But you can click on a job and you can do various things uh, on there. You can choose to edit it, remove it. But if you've highlighted one, you'll find this white box. If I've got multiple ones, I could just put the box around one of them. If I then said start render, it will only do the one that's got the white box on it. If you click off the list, it will then render everything that's in the list. So let's start the rendering. And it will be interesting to see how long uh, this actually takes uh, uh, to run through. Uh, depending on the speed of your machine, it can take, oh, this is, uh, what, a uh, ooh, 10 to 12 minute uh, video, including the song. And you can see it's going through there at a fair old pace on that. And it's telling me I've got uh, 35, um, 30 seconds remaining. If you look up here, this is the number of frames per second that it's actually rendering. Now, I don't expect your machines to be running quite as fast as this um, if you're watching this in well, August, September 2020, because I've just got a machine that is super high powered uh, graphics processor, which it's running through on the render. And you can see it's almost done already. So for me, uh, that's quite a quick render and it's taken one minute and eight seconds. And I managed to keep waffling for the whole length of that time. So that is how we, um, uh, we render the video. So I can go and find that, go on there, right click, open file location. And that will open the uh, folder. And here we have the video ready to uh, we transfer to someone or to uh, uh, upload to, to YouTube on there. Job done. Thanks for watching this video. And in fact, thanks for watching this entire series of uh, videos on DaVinci Resolve. We've come to the end of our first season, if you like, of videos, 10 videos, beginner level, explaining the, the essentials for DaVinci Resolve. But this isn't the end. It's not the end of your journey as a video editor. Uh, please just dive in there and get editing now and try out the techniques I've talked about. But more than that, stay subscribed to this channel because I will be doing a second season and I'll cover some slightly more advanced topics like uh, putting text on the screen, how to do lower thirds, um, some special effects, perhaps a little bit in the, um, uh, the color tab and color grading and color correction, things like that. So hopefully I'll see you in those. And if you have found this uh, series helpful, do me a favor, just leave me a comment down below, just so that I know you've watched it and that you've, uh, you've, you've found it helpful. So until next time, keep making great photos and especially keep making great videos. Bye for now.